Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Lazy Road Talk. Sorry for the delay. I was, I had to re-upload all videos. Um, there was some issue with my camera. Anyways, I'm here. Okay, good to have you. Um, I saw Sumilan said that he wouldn't, he wouldn't get up this early for anyone else. Oh, wow. I really, I'm really flattered. I, I thank you. Thank you for joining me. All right, okay. Well, we have a very interesting subject today. Um, I think this this topic has been uh, on my mind for a while. So I'm so happy that we get to discuss it today. So today we, we will talk about two things. First, Piaoi's fear of war and Xi Jinping's struggle with them over that. And also too, the internal chaos within the POA um, or, or whether or not the the chaos within the PLA has prevented Xi Jinping from uh, from his military operations against Taiwan. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. Um, I've talked in a number of my live streams about Xi Jinping's uh, internal struggle or fight with his military over an assortment of problems, corruption, disloyalty, uh, leaking information, and also colluding with foreign forces. But one issue at the center of the struggles is, an, is a dispute over Taiwan, uh, or a dispute over war against Taiwan. Some PLA officers are wary of, of war. They think that their chances of winning is small, and they don't want to sacrifice what they've got. And this view is more common among senior officers who are more established and well off. <clears throat> Excuse me. A war doesn't offer them any opportunities, but the risk of losing everything they've got. Uh, the PLA hasn't been on battlefield for decades. This anti-war sentiment became more pronounced after a war gaming exercise the PLA conducted in 2019 before the pandemic. And former PLA Navy officer Yao Chen explained that exercise in a recent interview. So let me play you video clip number one. Okay, here, here it is. Uh, can, you, can you guys hear? Should I, should I change the, uh, hold on, let me change the audio so it's, this thing, okay. Uh, let me see. From the military side, China can't just let Taiwan go. This is not really fair. From the military side, there are big changes. Before the pandemic, in 2019, the National Security Council gave the PLA a special task, which is to take Taiwan. First, the National Security Council and the Guangdong University conducted a study of the PLA military side, and then the Guangdong University and the Guangdong University conducted a study of the PLA. 指挥学院以研讨，嗯，呃，研讨以后呢，这个在东部战区进行了一次头上作业推演，就是就是西方讲的这个兵棋推演，嗯，那么紧接着就带动士兵，他当时带动士兵呢，是在唐山港组织了一次登陆与反登陆演习，他的模拟，因为唐山港和台湾的淡水港有点相似。嗯，在这模拟游戏，最后这个研讨结果得出来的结果是，呃，打台湾打不了，所以呢，军队在这方面有了一些，呃，消极情绪。Okay, um, so according to Colonel Yao, the war game exercise made PLA realize that they would suffer great human casualties. During the war game, they deployed 500,000 landing forces from, for Taiwan and still wouldn't obtain air or sea control. And after the exercise, the PLA changed the strategy and wanted to do what the Americans do, uh, which is by relying on advanced weapons to carry out targeted strikes. This would help them reduce human casualties. The role the rocket force would play thus became very important. However, this put the rocket force under great pressure. Um, the servicemen in the rocket force are more um, technology oriented or better educated, and they are more aware 
of how advanced the Americans are in weaponry and, and they're more experienced um, in combat. So the rocket, rocket force therefore has a collective pessimistic view about the war. By the way, I've copied the, the original, the links of the original interview in the description so you can, you can watch them if, if you speak Chinese. Um, the, the, the subtitle, the, the translation of the video uh, is, is very poor. I mean, I don't think you can understand what he was saying if you just follow the, the English. Um, I think it was auto, automatically generated subtitles. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm a translator, so I don't, I, I hate to see contents that are poorly translated. That's causing more confusion than clarifying anything. Okay, so <clears throat> that's why I translated um, the clips for you. Anyways, so you might remember my live stream in April about Xi Jinping's investigation of Liu Yazhou, a retired PLA general who is a princeling, a respected military strategist, and also the former political commissar of the, uh, the National Defense University. Um, do I have a picture of him? I might, oh, hold on. Here, here we go, yes, here's a picture of him. And rumors have been spreading far and wide about his pending suspended life sentence for spreading anti-war sentiment within the PLA. Um, and that's a very severe, that's a very severe sentence. General Liu is a prolific writer who believes that the PLA will lose to the United States in a battle over Taiwan. And his philosophy and views are popular among PLA officers. And his influence in the PLA is a big worry to Xi Jinping. And on July 26, she visited the Air Force of the Western Theater in Chengdu and reiterated his anti-corruption determination. Now, Liu Yajo, the reason he went there is because Liu Yajo had been the political commissar of the Chengdu military region, um, the Air Force of the Chengdu military region. So he went there to clean out Liu's influence. Um, law expert Yuan Hongbin, whom you have seen uh, recently in my program, he's the man who was Xi Jinping's drinking buddy for eight months and who now lives in Australia, he said a few days ago that the PLA officers are divided on the issue of a military showdown with the United States in a Taiwan Strait. He said there are two factions within the PLA. One faction is represented by Zhang Youxia and He Weidong, who are Xi Jinping's two vice chairmen of the Central Military Commission. Here we have, we have pictures of them. <clears throat> and they believe that it's better to fight sooner than later. This view believes that China's strategic op opportunity or the period where, where China, uh, the period in which China has or had the uh, opportunity for economic growth is over um, due to an all out pressure from the United States. Um, and they believe that it's time to proactively seek a showdown with the United States in the Taiwan Strait. And that the longer the delay, the more unfavorable situation can become for the CCP. Now, this is also Xi Jinping's view. The other view of faction number two um, is is, is the view uh, that's shared by some military officers who believe that this isn't a good time to start a war with the United States in the Taiwan Strait. <clears throat> and the reason, um, he didn't really elaborate the reason, and I think the reason is probably the same as the ones I discussed earlier. The officers have been discussing the risk of war amongst themselves privately and Xi Jinping sees this, this discussion among them as breaking away from the party's leadership. And they see that as spreading fear within the PLA. 
Now, Zhang Yuxia and He Weidong, the two vice, vice chairmen of the Central Military Commission, are the two highest ranking generals that Xi Jinping trusts within the PLA. And people believe that Zhang is in charge of personnel and He is in charge of the Taiwan war. I'm not surprised to hear that these two share the same view as Xi Jinping in terms of the <clears throat> in terms of the war, the timing of the war. At their level, um, being and also being so close to Xi Jinping, it's difficult for them not to see eye to eye with, with the top leader. They must unconditionally accept Xi Jinping's vision. If they didn't, they wouldn't be put in those positions, or it would be dangerous for them. So it doesn't matter what they really think, but they just probably have to get rid of their personal views and thoughts and just um, accept Xi Jinping's view as their, as their own. Now, the generals under them may be a different story, and these people uh, may have their own opinions and ideas, and they don't want to give up. Um, I've just discussed the division within the PLA over Taiwan. The Americans, on the other hand, have been deploying all sorts of tactics to warn the PLAs not to start a war. Um, so if you look at what has happened in the past uh, month or a couple of months, particularly the past two months, you've seen a number of US generals making statements about a possible war and how the Americans are determined um, to win the war. You've seen the Americans uh, releasing detailed reports about the rocket forces organization, personnel, weapon layout, and so on. The White House, the White House's additional arms sale to Taiwan, and the Americans holding the largest military exercise with 13 other countries involving 30,000 people. All of these are meant to send a message to the PL, P, PLA. Um, the, it's to deter the CCP's war ambition. The Americans' actions have had had an impact on the PLA or have an impact on the PLA. We've seen it at least in the rocket force. But the question is, does it have an impact on Xi Jinping? That brings us to the second question of today's discussion, which is, has this division and the ensuing internal chaos within the Chinese military prevented Xi Jinping from carrying out his plan for Taiwan, right? Um, right let, me, let me come back. Some experts have said that Xi's priority for the PLA right now is anti-corruption and political purging, and he may be forced to slow down war preparation. I actually also said that in my program last week when he when I made the program about his promotion of the new um, rocket force commander. But according to both Colonel Yao and Yuan Hongbing, Xi Jinping's internal cleansing of the military does not mean a slowdown in war preparations. Yuan Hongbing said, he said, the purpose of such a major purge is to ensure that his plan to wage a war in the Taiwan Strait can continue. The pace at which he is bringing the entire country into a state of war is accelerating. In the international community should remain alert. So that's what Yuan Hongbing said. Now, Colonel Yao Chen said the same thing, and he provided more details to substantiate that. He explained the reason that Xi Jinping appointed Wang, Wang Houbing. Um, here's... Here's his picture. Here we go. <clears throat> As the new rocket force commander, um, the reason is tied to Xi Jinping's plan or determination in carrying out a military operation against Taiwan. And he said, once experience, uh, he said, when, when one was first promoted, um, he had doubts about, about that decision, you know, the decision to promote him, because he said, once experience in rocket-related technology and his education aren't adequate um, to lead the most high-tech unit of the PLA. 
and he couldn't understand why he was promoted. But after speaking to uh, his contact in China, he learned Beijing's intention. And let me play a clip in which he explained that. Okay, here we go. You guys can hear, right? I just want to make sure the audio works. Okay, hold on. I have not seen any complaints. Okay, all right. I think it works. All right, here we go. Hold on, let me make this bigger. Um, okay, let me let me start from the very beginning. 那么我在跟从业们聊天的时候尤其是海军去参谋负责作战的组织计划重新部署这个火箭军的兵力部署 the colonel explained um, later in the in the interview that he knew one personally when they were both in the Navy together. They lived in the same compound and the two uh, came from the same province or hometown. You know, in China, when you're from the same region, particularly when you were in the military, you tend to bond um, well with each other. Uh, so we have we now have two China experts saying the same thing. They're saying that the internal chaos in the PLA has not slowed down a bit in Xi Jinping's war preparation. Now the question is, will Xi Jinping be successful in pushing the war agenda while conducting an internal purging? He can push, but is the PLA ready or would they accept that well? Um, now Xi Jinping might have given the answer himself Recently, when he visited the Eastern Theater, um, he he emphasized um, four words in, in Chinese. And, and those four words might have given away his concern for his for his military in terms of their preparation or readiness, war readiness. So uh, Colonel Yao talked about that as well. So I'm gonna play the next clip in which he <clears throat> he explained all of that. Okay, so the next clip is, I think this one. Let me start from the beginning. Xi Jinping to the North Korean speech, he said four words. Four words, four words. 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 实际上就是两个字
，呃，确实是，嗯，恐怕越来越力不从心。嗯，这个是好的一个点。第二个就是这个习近平现在最大的问题是党内的斗争，他的地位不稳，甚至他的生命安全都受到威胁。那么这在这种情况下，习近平就是想打，我看他也，军队也不会听他的。嗯，习近平最大的一个担心在哪里呢？一旦把军权给到了部队，部队手里面有了枪有了弹，他就更不好指挥了。尤其是这个一方面的指挥员，他一旦有了这个权利以后，你能保证他不去调转枪口吗？嗯，是逼宫吗？是清军策吗？这些都是都有可能发生的。对，所以现在中国在中国打台湾的问题，是最大的问题是出现在他的内部，一个是内部的斗争，第二个军队。呃，敢打会打，这个根本达不到要求。嗯。Okay. Um. So now the rocket force isn't the only PLA unit that Xi Jinping is having problems with. In one one of my earlier programs, I mentioned that the commander of the strategic support force is set to be investigated, and this has been confirmed by the commander's absence. At the reception hosted by the、uh, Ministry of Defense on July 31st to celebrate the 96th anniversary of the PLA, according to CCTV's video footage of the reception,、uh, Ju Tianshen, the commander of the Strategic Support Force, was not at the head table with the commanders of the other PLA units. And、uh, the, strate the strategic support force works very closely with the rocket force in the PLA,、uh, in the PLA's near space programs. And Ju's removal is believed to be tied to the spy balloon incident earlier this year, in addition to other issues、uh, within the rocket force. So corruption is a common a,、uh, a common ailment. In the CCP military, it has never ceased, and we tend to separate. You know, we tend to look at、uh, corruption as kind of a separate problem from from the PLA's lack of confidence in war, but they are related, according to these experts. So when Xi Jinping saw how pessimistic the rocket force was in war preparation, he wondered why they were so afraid. And what has happened to the money he gave them to spend on developing advanced weapons? Because they're they're fearful because they don't have good weapons, right? So he wondered what happened. What happened to all the money I gave you guys for for developing weapons? And he he wanted to know why, after spending so much money, China's weapons are still inferior and so much more inferior. And people say this is his incentive to investigate. Financial fraud in the military, and it is related to the PLA's lack of confidence in war. I also want to mention that there are officers and servicemen who are willing to fight in wars because that's their only way to move up the ranks.、Um, and these are usually the mid to lower <clears throat> ranking officers. Doves and hawks have all ex always existed in the militaries, right, throughout the world, but only in communist China it's a problem、um, when one group is suppressed. So that's all for today, and let me see if people have questions.、Uh, I hope this is helpful. So if you have questions for me, put put my name in the front, and、um, and so I know it's addressed to me. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Okay. From Frank C. E. What do you think about the mental state of present Xi? Insanity could take many forms. Land of Taiwan is not running away. Why want to invade it? Um.、Uh, I can't really comment on his mental state,、uh, but mental issues、uh, are more prevalent in China, in mainland China, than 
in other parts of the world. I actually had a, a, a psychiatrist on my program. I interviewed a psychiatrist, Dr. Yen, a few months ago, and maybe maybe I could provide the link to you um, to watch that. Chinese have what what he described as the um, Stockholm syndrome. Um, now, as far as why he wants to, why is he so attached to Taiwan? I talked about this many times. First of all, it would be his personal uh, political legacy. So he has placed himself to the same stature as Mao and Deng. And so in order for him to achieve the same status, he would have to um, solve the remaining territorial issues for, for, for the CCP, which is Taiwan unification. That's his personal ambition. Now for the, for the regime, there is a um, le legitimacy issue because the political, in terms of the dynastic changes, the Qin dynasty passed its, um, you know, passed its, how to say, baton to the, to the Republic of China in 1912. And the emperors, the last emperor of Qin dynasty acknowledged people's um, willingness to have a republic uh, over an imperial uh, system in 1912 and ceded power to the ROC. So the ROC is a legitimate <clears throat> uh, political government that inherited this power from the Qin dynasty. And it's still in existence. The CCP has never you know, completely get rid of ROC. So for the past decades, you have two governments that coexisted across the strait. So for CCP to fully claim legitimacy in ruling China, it wants to get rid of ROC. And that's the second reason. Okay, let me see. Uh, Silas Larson, Lee's office is actually an aquarium. Perhaps she's a mermaid. Have you ever seen her? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, am I a mermaid? Oh, I don't know. I'm, um, I'm afraid of water. I'm afraid of water. And I, uh, yeah. When I watched the movie The Titanic, I had so much, I had so much tears. So I wonder if I've ever um, experienced something similar. So um, yeah, so <laughs> so I don't think I'm a mermaid in, in any way possible. All right, let's see. All right, there's some very a lot. Okay, William Smith. Slapping Xi Jinping. Have you covered China's nuclear submarine base in Cambodia yet? There are other bases abroad, which the CCP PLA deny as well. Yeah, they're building so many bases around the world. And oh, there's so many topics I wish I have the time to, co to cover. Uh, not yet, uh, but maybe I will. Let's see. Um, Xiao Bailiar. <laughs> Thanks for being awesome. I do my best to tell everyone about your show. Well, thank you. Thank you, Xiao Bailiar. <laughs> thank you so much. Sam's on. Which role will Russia play? Oops. Uh, I do my best. Uh, hold on. Could Russia help China in the war against Taiwan? Um, I think... Do they trust each other? I think they're just using each other. I don't think they're best friends as they described. Um, didn't CCP send a representative to this a conference that, go, that, that are discussing for the foreign ministers? I think foreign ministers of how many countries? I don't know, dozens of countries who got together to discuss the peace initiative for uh, Ukraine and China send a representative. So, and Russia got upset and also, oh, China got upset over the fact that the, Rush, the Russians denied uh, border entries of some Chinese recently and China uh, or the Chinese foreign ministry reacted to that. So I don't know if they're best friends as they claim. 
All right, let me see. From Agent Otaku, if a war really occurs, will India take back Tibet and Vietnam attack if the bulk of Chinese forces attack Taiwan and in lock battle with US military? Does that worry the Chinese? Oh, I think the Chinese are worried about the flood and their economy, their pocketbooks. They're not thinking about the war. Actually, somebody just mentioned that uh, the Chinese are, are posting on the social media to say, yeah, if a war breaks out and if I'm given a gun, you know, I'll take the gun and shoot, shoot at the real enemies, you know, and I mean, they didn't say who the real enemies are, but people who, like a lot of Chinese kind of laughed and know what they were referring to. So uh, one, the Chinese, a lot of Chinese are not thinking, I mean, they're really dealing with their daily miseries in terms of the economy and also the flood uh, for those living in the region. And, and they're not thinking so far out about the war. And if the war does break out, it's hard to say how the Chinese will react. Yeah. Peter, I'm sensing a cover convergence of serious issues such as the pandemic response, debt bubbles, flood, etc., that would put a very large target on Xi's back. Thoughts? I agree. I think he's having a hard time. Um, I mean, before he was just dealing with the politics, po you know, the political factions that were against him. Now, he, you know, I mean, almost everyone is, you know, against him or is opposing him over one issue or the other, right? There's just so many people have grievances over the issues that you mentioned. So yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, didn't President Biden said that he wouldn't trade, you know, like people wouldn't, like he, what did he say? He wouldn't trade for, for you know to be in the to the to be in the same position as Xi Jinping something to that effect i think <laughs> nobody wants to be in his position but i also i always said the ccp leaders thrive in conflicts and crisis they are that kind of beings the ccp is is different <laughs> uh, people in the world generally do better in in peaceful times, we want peace, we want uh, harmony, right, stability, but they thrive better. They, <clears throat> they're very good at taking advantage of world crisis and chaos. And that's why they want, <clears throat> that's why they're banking their hope on the 2024 elections, the two elections coming up, one in Taiwan and one in the United States. If they successfully uh, implement chaos in those two countries during the, the general elections or the presidential elections in those two countries, that means opportunities for the CCP. So I hope people in those two countries are aware of CCP's tactics and don't fall into the CCP's traps. <clears throat> David Lopan, where can I find Chinese girls with the green eyes? I don't think you'll ever find them. Sorry. Um, voices on Espanol. Any reaction to news that China and Russia conduct a joint naval exercise with 11 warships near Alaska last week? I think it's more for show. Like I said, I don't really know how close the two countries are in essence. But it's, uh, it's a relationship of convenience. They need to um, stick with each other uh, for the time being because they, they need each other. Um, a lot of it is, is for show. Thank you for the donation from Manquette. Lei, was there any impact of Typhoon on defense equipment, particularly the Navy of PLA? Um, there are military base, bases in Herbei. But I don't know if the CCP has been effective in manually manipulating the dams that they built along the rivers uh, by turning off and turning on switches <clears throat> of those dams to quote unquote protect their military bases. 
because they, they are doing that to protect Xiong'an, right? So if they are able to do that, the question is, are they able to do the same thing by uh, directing the floods to certain targeted areas by sacrificing the, 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 the lives and the well-beings of people in those regions in order to save the military bases in other regions? Um, that's a question. They, it seems that they are able to do that. Um, so that, you know, they seems to be able to do that, but whether or not they're entirely successful is, is yet to be seen. Brian Cobb, like I agree with Xi Jinping. I agree with Xi Jinping. Okay, well, you agree with him. Better for China to fight now. US is only now reforming its Pacific alliances. See Australia and Philippines. It appears US military is behind the curve on advanced tech. Your thoughts, please. Oh, I think Xi Jinping has, has so much, if you look at the, the way the Chinese society has been, um, the economy, the social, social stability has both declined so drastically in the past six months, seven months, since the beginning of the year. And he really worries about, you know, the future of China, or at least the, the, the trajectory of, of this decline or this deterioration worries him. That's one thing. And the second concern is the United States. He does believe that Joe Biden is weak. And he worries that if um, a Republican president is elected, you know, he would, he, you know, he will run into more opposition, um, a stronger opposition. So taking advantage of an older and a weaker Joe Biden is certainly in his mind. So that's that's on his that's on his mind. Uh, what does that mean for the United States? Uh, I don't know. I think that's a question for the Americans to answer. All right. Um, Digital Formosan. She can ask Putin if she may hire Wagner to fight the wars he wants to. I don't think if he, if he wants to hire them. Do you think he wants to hire them? Take a look at the drama two months ago. Um, I I don't know if he if he. I mean, he would be paranoid if he if he has a tiny if there's just a tiny bit of uncertainty of loyalty. He's you know he's paranoid. So why would he want to hire? The Wagner Group. I doubt it. Um, let's see. From Tanzing Jigmi. Hi, Lei. I have a question about the dam discharge. How far the water, how far the water redirected from Tibet to China have added to the water level or man-made flood? Thank you so much. Oh, that's a very technical question. I can't really answer that, but what I know is. China has built these super dams <clears throat> in the upstreams of the water um, flowing down from the Tibetan plateau. Uh, that, that water is really the source, is the water source of Asia or a big part of Southeast Asia. It eventually flows to uh, the, the Laos, Vietnam. And China has built so many super dams, which really isn't friendly ecologically. Um, <clears throat> So, but it's really, it's really dangerous because waters, rivers is like a beam. It needs to flow, right? The fact that wa water flows uh, it, continuously, that's, that's the life. That's part of the ecology. And when you want to hijack the water and break it, it's almost like you're breaking a river, a living being. And that's really not not good. And people say the Yangtze River and the, the Yellow River is really the lifeline of the Chinese nation. So the fact that the CCP built the Three Gorges along the Yangtze River is like, you know, uh, cutting the lifeline of the Chinese nation. Um, and it, it will have serious consequences. So, all right, let me see. 
Peter, you are a gem. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Pigeonkin, is there any path for the CCP to save face while not having to obsess on unification by 2049? It's, obsess it's obsession with the unification is not going to go away for the two reasons I gave earlier. And I think the timeline, the timing has been moved up. It's not by 2049, it's what, by 2027? Xi Jinping is obligated to address this issue by the end of his third term, because his part of the reason for him to continue, uh, to continue his third term is that he is, he has the responsibility to resolve the Taiwan issue. So he has what, five years, no, four years now. <clears throat> and if he doesn't, that could mean the end of his power. So he, uh, so that's why I don't think 2049 is, I mean, 2049 is, uh, is tw 20 some years away from now. So I think time is more of an essence for him. From Zach Birch, would attack Taiwan be so detrimental to men in China economically that it would undermine Xi's lust for power? Is he willing to weaken China to an extent as long as he remains power? Yes, your question is valid from a Western perspective because any sane leader, any leader with, <laughs> with reasons and good sense of judgment would ask that question. But I like said, CCP, they thrive in a chaotic situations. They become more, they seize power in chaos. So the uh, economic stability, it's economic stability may only, you know, so the economics growth in the past three decades or two decades only allowed the CCP to become more powerful, to allow them to build more, um, to develop more military technology. They're not necessarily interested in the well-being of the people. That's a byproduct for them. Uh, but now that opportunity is gone, right? Like like the the um, like uh, Yuan Hongbin said. Then it's best for them to take advantage of the, of the opportunity before people on the large scale to to get upset to to revolt against them for the for the lost opportunity economically. And while they still have the money that they have accumulated from the past two to three decades to launch a, an attack. Um, because everything they think is from their perspective, from the power, from, from the regime's perspective, they do not care about people's well-being. The only reason they care is how people's reaction. Um, so, so right, so their rhyme of reason and their logic uh, is different from the logic that we have here in the West. Um, would the PRC accept the ROC as a spin-off diaspora? No, um, and I already gave the two answers. I gave the two answers in my interview in Taiwan. You can watch that video as well. Um, Steve Essish, <laughs> I like, would it not make more sense for Xi to invade Manchuria and return it to China? You mean Mongolia? Manchuria is already part of China. Manchuria is Northeast China. Uh, you mean Mongolia, to return it to China instead of Taiwan. It's not as if Russia army are not busy at the moment. Um, no, I don't think. Well, again, yeah. If he, if he, if the CCP's war against Taiwan is truly based on their territorial interest over Taiwan, then it will make sense. But no, China uh, in the past couple of decades, China has ceded more land to Russia than Taiwan. I think it's like, I don't know how many more times. So the issue 
the obsession with Taiwan is not territorial. It's, it's, uh, it's legitimacy to rule. It wants to wipe out ROC from the map. Uh, otherwise, it's not a legitimate re regime to rule China. Um, so, from uh, Jairo Herrera, why do communists call themselves comrades while later disowned, purging, and executing each other later, like Zhang Zhixing was for opposing Mao's cult of personality? Because the whole entire communist ideology is based on class struggle, revolution, conflict, and chaos. Um, the communist ideology do not welcome or, or endorses peace, harmony, coexistence, and tolerance. It ha it's based on class struggle. It turns people against each other. It believes in violence. Uh, it, it, it uses some very high sounding ideology, like achieving um, a, common a common destiny of, what do you call that? Common prosperity of all mankind, um, like equality in the name of equality, whether it's racial equality for the United States or economic equality during the 1930s and 40s in China. In the name of equality, it, it turns people, one sector of society against another in the name of uh, revolution or, or class struggle. And so, so comrades, so it will always, so every 10 years, if you look at the Chinese history under the CCP, it will start some kind of political purging or, or, or movement or campaign to turn people against each other, to turn Chinese, to, f to let one group of, of Chinese to fight another. And that, that's how they thrive. And that's how they, they, they turn people to hate each other and then they will obtain absolute control and power. That this 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 attribute of the CCP or this attribute of communism or, or the very progressive socialist is something the West has ignored. And this will allow them to obtain absolute control over everyone. Um, and yeah, so that's that's. That's what communism is about. That's why they, they will purge one person against, I mean, one group against the other. All right, let me see. Um, from Frank C.E., President Xi is making a big mistake by his war rhetorics. Next Russian leader may extend hands to EU, NATO, CCP may end up without friends. Don't you think Russians don't trust Xi? I think the Russians don't trust Xi. Um, and I think the Russians are likely to extend their hands to the EU, NATO, and and the CCP will become very, very lonely. I think that scenario is likely um, if the Russians are smart. Um, Mark Pollard, how many people do you think would die as a result of war? I hope not a single person dies in in a war, but I know that's probably wishful thinking. I hope the war doesn't break out, uh, but but I'm not so confident if the West will be successful in deterring a war. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, there are a lot of discussions. I think I've answered a lot of questions. Okay, all right. Um, is that all? Well, oh, here I have a super sticker from Brian Cow. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. The influencer at Lay, what's your thoughts on the omen predicted for this year and the current natural flood disaster? And this might impact the current leadership in China. Yeah, there's just so many. Uh, I made a video at the beginning of, was it at the end of last year? Perhaps it felt so, re time flies. I can't imagine it's been two and a half years since I started doing YouTube. 
Um, I made a video about seven signs, seven omens that predicted the downfall of the CCP. And people say the flood, the fact that the Forbidden Palace is being flooded is a very bad omen for, for Xi Jinping and the CCP because the, the palace had never been flooded for 600 years. So hopefully uh, these are all signs that people, you know, that, 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 that people will, will get. I hope people around Xi Jinping, you know, will help him get the cues sent from the heavens and and do something great for himself and also for the nation, you know, which is to uh, end the communist regime. Um, and I think that will be the best thing he could do. All right. Um, thank you. Let me see. Jerry Watson, did the military and naval bases in the south of China get wiped out too? How can she plan to make a war with all the damage that has been done? What kind of damage do you mean? You mean the, the typhoon? Or oh, the typhoon landed in Fujian and went up north and now it's in northeast China. It's it's tremendous. It's yeah, it's it's horrendous. Little dragon, thank you, Lei, for all the wonderful work you do. I always love to watch your channel. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Uh all right. Okay, um, one last question. I just pick a random question. Uh, Jin, are people in China aware of the extent of the flooding in the affected areas? Are they in the dark about it? Um, I think they are aware of it, but they're not aware of all the flooding. Georgia, which was one of the, I think the first city that got flooded and the information are already uploaded. Uh, but there are, there must be experts say there must be other cities in Hebei that are equally, uh, that suffer equal amount of um, tragedies, if not more in nearby cities, but we have not heard anything about them. And they believe that it's because the information is being blocked. So people are hearing about the flood, and but they're not hearing all of them. So I think there's still a lot of information about uh, there's a lot about what's happening in China that we don't know. And I know the the online trolls and then the the online police are deleting information, but people are fighting them by reposting them. So there's an online war going on. I saw this morning. Um, you know, sometimes the internet police is not fast enough in removing all the information and people are reposting them. Now, I found something very interesting on Twitter. I think the CCP has effectively uh, infiltrated all social media platforms. I was searching about Zhuozhou on Twitter for the past two days. And I just put in Zhuozhou and I search. And there was no, I was not given one post about Giorgio. I searched it in Chinese. And instead, I was fed all these uh, porn ads from China. Uh, unstoppable amount of porn ads from China. And not a single post about the flood from Giorgio. Uh, and I, I used Chinese to search. I'm like, what's going on here? And it was like that for days. Um, so I think the CCP, because Twitter is a platform that a lot of C, a lot of Chinese use to post, um, you know, information about what's happening in China. And I think the CCP has really targeted. Um, and I think it's it's just. It's you know being under siege. It looks like it, and I think Twitter needs to do something about it to clean up to clean that up. Um, you have to put in like Georgia uh, dam discharge, or like you have to put in more descriptive words in order to find the the posts. I know the posts are there, um, but why I can't find them is is a question. So. 
So yeah, so they are they are here uh, trying to manipulate in our social media platforms as well. All right, so that's all for today. And I thank you for joining me. Have a great Sunday or the a great uh, beginning of the week or actually no Sunday night for some of you. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you next week. All righty, bye.